Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So we made it. It is the last week of the quarter. So let's talk a little bit about where we're going in week 10 of our classic control theory class. So um, here we are. Like I said, we are now going to be investigating kind of one of the last and probably one of the more powerful control techniques. So this is known as the linear quadratic regulator or LQR control. This is actually a type of full state feedback controller. So remember last week during week nine, we spent a lot of time looking at full state feedback control and how to generate full state feedback controllers. Well, LQR is really, if you want to think about it, it's really just another way to generate a full state feedback controller, but you do it in a very specific way that is framed in an optimization framework. So we're not going to have a lot of time to talk about optimization, but hopefully we all remember this when we talked about it in AE501 uh, during the last two weeks of class. We spent, spent a fair bit of time talking about optimization, and now we're going to use this in a control context right here. So that's the first video is this introduction to LQR control. It's a little bit longer, but we do go into some pretty good detail and give a couple examples of how to do this. Um, now, uh, that being said, this is sort of the end of the control synthesis discussion of the, of the class. The last two videos down here are actually talking a little bit about how do you deal with nonlinear models and turning those into linear models? Basically, how do you first trim a nonlinear model that's basically find an operating point where it can be linearized about? And then the next is, how do you linearize that actual model? The little caveat with these two videos is, for those of you who have taken my flight mechanics class, right, the AE512 uh, or AA516, these are actually videos that we watched in that class. So this might be a little bit of repeat for some people, but for those that haven't seen it, this is pretty powerful because, again, what this is going to allow us to do is take a nonlinear model and then find a trim point and then linearize around that trim point. So, in essence, we're basically taking a nonlinear model, specifying some operating condition, and then we're generating a linear model around that operating condition. And once we have that linear model, then all of these techniques that we talked about during the weeks one through nine of the class can be brought to bear on that linear model. So these last two videos, they might seem a little bit different than uh, the rest, but it's pretty powerful because it's going to allow us to take any nonlinear system and pretty much apply all of these techniques that we learned about in class to that linear system. So that's the game plan. And with that, that's going to pretty much end the AE 511 class. So let's take a quick look at homework 10. So again, one last homework assignment to look at. So here it is. The first problem is, again, playing with that planar vehicle model that we had. But again, I'd like to look at how do you trim this at a very specific operating point right here. So again, this MATLAB 15 video is going to be very important because that's going to tell you how to do this and how to use a MATLAB tool to conduct that type of trimming. Then, once you trim this, we're going to want to go ahead and linearize around that trim point to obtain these two transfer functions. So again, this is going to be this discussion right here. So this will pretty much allow you to obtain two transfer functions of the system operating around this operating point. Now, I'm sure the natural question that's popping into your head is, okay, you got a linear system, but this linear system is based around this particular operating point. Well, what happens if that operating point or trim point changes? That's exactly what I want to investigate in part C. Well, what if you change the, the speed? Let's say instead of linearizing around 10 meters per second, you want to linearize around 15 meters a second. Well, do these two transfer functions change? Basically, does your linear model change as the operating point of your nonlinear model changes? That's what I'd like to investigate here. And then on part D, let's go back to the original transfer functions that you got for the V equals 10 meters per second case, and then design um, some controllers based on this. So what we're going to do is design these two controllers um, using kind of any technique you'd like. So these uh, are basically what we looked at earlier in um, a previous homework, and then just go ahead and simulate this. Okay, so again, part E is simulating the linear response. So it's this linear transfer function under this linear controller. Now, the reason I call that out is because part F, the last part, is now, okay, you have a linear controller at this point. Well, how do you apply this linear controller to the nonlinear plant model? That's what we're looking at right here. So this is something that, um, again, maybe what I will do is let me point out that we do have a separate sort of optional video that might help you. This is the Controls 28 video where I talk a little bit about 
how to translate between linear and nonlinear systems. So you might want to look at that again. For those of you who have taken my flight mechanics class, we've already talked about this. So again, you've already seen this discussion if you took the flight mechanics class. But if not, feel free to check this out. It's about just, uh, let me look at this. Yeah, it's about a 30 minute discussion showing you how to take your linear results and apply it to a non-linear system. That's what I've got in this little hint box right here. It's effectively, you're gonna have to remember to take into account the trim control U0 um, when you're doing this translation. So that's all that problem is. Okay, so that's problem one is basically playing a little bit around with your planar vehicle and trying to, uh, pardon the pun, close the loop on the entire system with respect to uh, designing a linear controller and then applying it to a nonlinear plant. Okay, now let's jump into problem two. Problem two is looking at, um, actually we're going to go revisit the homework that we just looked at, homework nine. So let me pull that up just so we can look at the two side by side. So remember in homework nine, we had this problem here, where I said, here's some linear system. It has two inputs. You can see that by two columns of the B matrix. It has all the states as outputs. And then in problem two in homework nine, we were designing a full state feedback controller by just placing the poles at these sort of quasi random locations and then investigating the behavior, okay? All I would like to do in this problem now in homework 10, problem two, is let's look at the same plant model, but instead we are now going to design an LQR controller, which again is just a type of full state feedback controller, but we are going to use these particular weighting matrices or the Q and the R matrix. Um, again, what these are is going to make a lot of sense once you watch the LQR video. All I'm asking you to do here is, again, do 10 different designs as you vary the R matrix. In this case, it looks like I want the Q matrix to be constant, but we're going to vary the R matrix like this. And now I'd like you to look at what does the system do? What is the behavior? How does the control signal vary? Why would you want to use LQR versus full state feedback that we were designing in the previous homework? So again, um, just think about, you know, earlier I asked you to comment on the behavior and your thoughts on a full state feedback controller. I'd like the same thing right now with an LQR controller, right? What are your thoughts about the trade-offs and the benefits? When would you use one or the other? Okay, so that is the last, well, second to last problem, I guess the very last problem, problem three is, please go ahead and make sure you have filled out the class survey. So there's nothing really to deliver here because these class surveys are anonymous. I'm not gonna know who's filled them out or not, but I would just ask that you do because it does provide me with some valuable feedback. So I think there was an email that went out with a URL. So everyone should be able to have access to that survey right now. So please, please, please fill it out. And when you're turning in your homework, just for problem three, just put a one line statement saying, yes, I filled out the survey. Um, and that's pretty much it. So with that being said, um, that's the end of the class. Um, we've got the final project, which I know everyone is probably working on. So I'll look forward to seeing what everyone has done um, at our final exam time. But otherwise, I had a great time. Um, I really enjoyed talking with everyone this quarter. I hope everyone also learned something and found it valuable. Um, otherwise, we've got email still. I think I've got one more office hour. So feel free to drop me a line if you'd like to chat some more. Otherwise, I look forward to talking to people at hopefully another future video. All right, I think I'm gonna sign off. Talk to you later, bye.